Well, hello, everybody. I know that many of us remember meeting for the first time at Ramstein two years ago today for what would become this contact group. We've reached a real milestone today, and I'm honored that we've got a message to market from President Zelensky. And then we'll move into the day's agenda. And ladies and gentlemen, let me turn it over to the President of Ukraine. Secretary Austin, I thank you for your leadership in this Ramstein format. Distinguished ministers and generals, General Brown, dear friends, I'm pleased to greet you and to say that Ramstein has indeed become a global event. If we in Ukraine had not received your help with weapons, and if your countries had shown indifference to the destiny of our people, the world would definitely be different. And it is worth reminding, predatory regimes like Russia's are rapidly increasing their appetite for aggression. When they succeed in one part of the world, it creates problems in many other places. Aggression spreads when not stopped. If our solidarity with you had not worked out, and if your reaction to the war had remained only in words, the world would have had to deal with a much more powerful Russia. Many people worldwide would still believe that Russian missiles cannot be shut down. Many people would still be convinced that the Russian army is capable of crushing anyone's independence. Many would grovel in front of Putin and not even try to defend their sovereignty if it were not for this example of ours. An example of courage that works and that must work completely. Dear friends, please do not forget what you are deciding. This is not just about the arms supply. You are deciding the fate of the world that will either live by rules that we all recognize or depend only on the mercy of those whose violence is brutal. At what point is the war now? After two years of Ramstein, the answer is clear. Everything still depends only on our interaction, on how quickly we act and whether our agreements are fully implemented. Although in a half a year, while we were waiting for a decision on the American support, the Russian army managed to seize the initiative on the battlefield. We can still now not only stabilize the front, but also move forward, achieving our Ukrainian goals in the war. Each of you understands what will be most effective. First, long-range weapons. No part of the occupied territory of Ukraine should remain safe for the occupier. And I thank every leader whose solutions are already working hard on the front lines, storm shadows, scalps, and attackums. The range should be sufficient. Second, air shield. This year, Russian jets has already used more than 9,000 guided aerial bombs against Ukraine. And we need the ability to shoot down their combat aircraft so that they do not approach our positions and borders. It is possible. It is just as possible as giving protection to the cities of Ukraine from Russian rockets. We urgently need Patriot systems and missiles for them. This is what can and should save lives right now, at least Seven Petros are necessary for our cities to be safe. You have these systems, and they truly can change the situation now, change it for the better, as well as accelerating the transition to F-16. Our counter-terrorism cooperation must be more effective than Russia's cooperation with the regimes in Iran and North Korea. Third, artillery. Many of those present at Rammstein were soldiers. 
And you can imagine what our soldiers feel when they simply have nothing to respond to enemy fire. The 1 to 10 ratio of artillery in our country to that of the Russian army inspires Putin to fight on. He believes that he will walk through the ruins and he will try to launch his counteroffense. We must disrupt it. Our soldiers need artillery enough 155 calibers to stop Russian assaults and conduct our own active operations. And I thank every country that really effectively helps with this. And one more, please pay maximum attention to the production of weapons, both in your countries and in our joint projects with you and in Ukraine. Now in Ukraine, we have the potential for the production of drones in particular, which significantly exceeds our financial capabilities. Same with the electronic warfare systems, likewise in many areas in your countries. We need to fill our defense capacities with real orders. And we are currently forming new brigades to strengthen our positions. They need support, just like the brigades already operating at the front. Our team participating in Rammstein will present all the details. Even best soldiers cannot change the war without sufficient number of weapons. And I'm proud of Ukrainian soldiers. Each of you knows the strengths and capabilities of our soldiers. They know how to win. They must win. But Ukrainian defenders need your sufficient and timely support. Exactly what you would need to win if you were soldiers in this war. Thank you for your attention. I'm grateful for your support. And I would especially like to thank the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin. We appreciate that it was on your personal initiative that exactly two years ago, the contact group on defense of Ukraine anti-war coalition was created, which united efforts and rallied more than 50 countries of the world. Ukraine is grateful to you for your dedication, for the tireless work of your team and all of the partners for the saved lives of our citizens. Thank you. Slava Ukraini. Well, on behalf of the uh, entire uh, contact group, I want to thank President Zelensky for his inspiring remarks. Now, I know that everyone here shares President Zelensky's sense of urgency. So once again, thanks for joining us for this 21st meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. And thanks to our partners in Ukraine, uh, Minister Umerov, General Sirsky, uh, it's good to see you again. Uh, two years ago today, many of us gathered at, at Ramstein Air Base for the very first meeting of what became this contact group. And in my opening remarks that day, I said that we're going to keep moving heaven, heaven and earth to meet Ukraine's security needs. For two years, that's exactly what we've done. And even at this moment of challenge, that should be a source of great pride for us all. This extraordinary coalition of nations of goodwill has held together throughout two years of Putin's flagrant aggression and his contempt for human rights and human decency. And over these two years, we've been inspired by the courage of Ukraine's troops. Just a month before our first meeting at Ramstein, Ukraine had won the Battle of Kyiv. And Ukraine was uncovering the mass atrocities committed by Putin's forces. The world recoiled at Russia's crimes in Bucha, Mariupol, and elsewhere. And Ukraine's forces steeled themselves for the fight ahead. 
And since then, Ukraine's troops have retaken the city of Kyrgyzstan and parts of the Kharkiv region. They've taken back large swaths of the Ukrainian territory that Russia grabbed since its unprovoked invasion in 2022. And they pushed Russia's fleet to the furthest uh, eastern corner of the Black Sea. Now that's led Ukraine uh, nearly return to pre-war levels of grain exports. And for 793 days now, the Ukrainian people have stood tall against the Kremlin's aggression. As I said at Ramstein two years ago, my Ukrainian friends, we know the burden that you all carry. And you should know that all of us have your back. And we still do. And we won't back down. This week, the United States Congress passed and the president signed into law a package that includes $60.8 billion in additional funding related to Ukraine. And Putin's aggression against Ukraine is a security problem for us all. And we must continue to tackle it together. And two years later, I'm not just proud, I'm determined. Now, Putin thought that he would just roll over Ukraine. He thought that Ukraine wasn't a real country. He thought that Ukrainians wouldn't fight for their democracy. And he thought that the world would just stand by. Putin was wrong on every point. He didn't count on Ukraine's resolve, and he didn't count on us, all of us. Over the past two years, some 50 countries from across the globe have gathered for ministerial level meetings to coordinate our urgent military assistance. And the results have changed the course of history. Over the past two years, the members of this contact group have committed more than 70 mid to long range air defense systems, along with thousands of missiles. We provided more than 3,000 armored vehicles, including more than 800 main battle tanks. We've given Ukraine tens of thousands of anti-tank missiles. And this year, more than a squadron of donated F-16s will start to arrive in Ukraine, along with pilots and maintainers trained by members of this contact group. And this contact group continues to step up to meet Ukraine's most urgent needs. Just look at the Czech Republic's extraordinary initiative to procure thousands of artillery shells from third countries. And the UK has announced its largest single package of equipment ever, worth approximately $620 million. Or consider Germany's bold announcement that it will donate another Patriot system to Ukraine. And today, I'm pleased to share that the United States will provide, through Presidential Drawdown Authority, another $1 billion worth of assistance, including more ammunition for HIMARS, 155-millimeter ammunition, air defense interceptors, and armored vehicles. Now, these are all testaments to our shared commitment to Ukraine's success on the battlefield. And through the contact group's capability coalitions, we now have nimble, the, the nimble, flexible structure to adapt to new challenges and to build up the future force that Ukraine needs for its long-term security. But we take nothing for granted. And we know that Putin is ruthless and relentless. Russia is launching increasingly fierce attacks on Ukraine's critical infrastructure, including targeting its power plants. And more and more Ukrainian civilians are dying. So we're going to have to we're going to we're going to have a special focus today on boosting Ukraine's air defenses. Ukraine is in dire need of more air defense systems and it urgently needs more interceptors. That's going to be a huge priority for us all today. Ukraine also needs more artillery and armor to defend its citizens and reclaim its stolen territory. 
and we're going to do everything that we can to help them. Ladies and gentlemen, Ukraine's struggle for freedom matters to us all. If Ukraine fell under Putin's boot, Europe would fall under Putin's shadow. So we remain determined to deter Russia from any further aggression, including against our NATO allies. If Putin got his way in Ukraine, his fellow autocrats would draw a dangerous lesson. And the whole world would become more chaotic and insecure if would-be aggressors believe that they can rewrite borders by force and make people, feel, make people live in fear. So as I said two years ago in Ramstein, we will continue to help strengthen the arsenal of Ukraine democracy. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Thanks for being here. And thanks for everything that you've done for our shared security over the past two years. And we'll now pause for, while our friends in the media depart.